Are you a beginner piano student and you want to learn how to count compound time signatures on the piano? Well, what in the world are they anyway? Well, they're time signatures like 6, 8, 9, 8, and 12, 8. There's a lot going on with these in addition, you know, above and beyond what you would expect from something like 4, 4 or a simple time signature. So I'm going to tell you why it's called a compound time signature, but I'm also going to tell you how to play them, of course. So let's get on to our first topic. Okay, so the first thing we're talking about is what is a compound time signature? So a compound time signature uh, usually has an eight at the bottom. As you can see here, we have a six, eight, and that tells you something special, of course. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, and then these time compound time signatures include six, eight, nine, eight, and 12, eight, and they're called compound time signatures because they can be counted in two ways. Uh, one way involves counting each individual beat. So, you know, like one, two, three, three, four, five, six. The other way of counting them involves breaking them up into two sets of three, as we'll talk about in a minute. All right, let's get on to our first compound time signature. Okay, I should be back. Um, let's see. Okay, I should be coming back. Uh, let me know. Okay, can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? I want to make sure everybody can hear and see me before I resume once again. I hope that it didn't cut out as I was too far into the explanation. I think we were just getting into 6-8. Um, also, let me know like where we left off. So I'm back. We're going to go to my end. Okay. Now, where did I leave off? Did I start talking about 6-8 yet or, um, or what? I think I did. Okay, great. Now, just let me know um, where, uh, where we left off or, or like what was the last thing I talked about before it cut out. All right, great. Okay. Uh, six, eight. Okay, great, great. So I'll start from there then. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay, good. So at least it got that far, dividing in parts. Okay, uh, Barbara said, I had trouble getting the show tonight. I had to sign out of YouTube to get it. Well, it could be because for a little while um, it was um, broken down, um, the, the stream, but now it's back up. Okay, back here once again. Okay, and with time, compound time signatures, there's two different ways you can count them. You can count them as the individual beats they have. So if we have six, eight, you can count them as one, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can actually group them into two groups of two um, in groups of three, two groups of three. And then it would be counted as one, two. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, in a second. So our first main compound time signature is, of course, 6-8 time signature, which we just kind of had in front of us uh, just now. So it's one of the most common compound time signatures. Actually, let me give you a look here. Um, and it also has six beats in each measure. And since the bottom number is an eight, I mentioned that earlier, that tells you something very important. It tells you that the eighth note, you can just write TH basically for whatever uh, numbers at the bottom. So it tells you that the eighth note is getting one beat instead of the quarter note. What that means though, is that doubles every note value. So if an eighth note, since it got half a beat before, is now getting one complete beat, um, every other beat, like uh, the quarter quarter note, which got one beat before, now gets two as a result of that. So let's take a look here. Let me kind of uh, erase what we had here to clean it up. And you also want to know um, that it can be counted, as I mentioned before, in six or in two. Now, when you're first learning six, eight, I highly, highly recommend you just count out those individual beats. One, two, three, four, five, 
and 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pretty easy, right? Now, if you want to count it in 2, which, like I said, when you first learn this, count it in 6. And really the reason I recommend that for students is so they don't miss any beats. When you start counting in 2, it's easier, I find at least, to start messing up the beats. So only count it in 2 once you've learned the song well enough. But it is important to count it in 2 because it helps the song uh, kind of have a better flow to it. And you're not thinking of six individual beats. You're thinking of two main beats. Um, so you have beat one and then beat two there. Uh, being able to count it in two beats also has another effect on the measure in that it lays out accents. So every time signature has natural accents. And we've talked about these in other lessons before. Like 4-4 four, four has a, a strong accent on beat one, a weaker on beat three. Um, two, 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 four only has a strong beat on beat one, and then three, four, same thing, only on beat one. Here, when you count it as six, there's only a strong beat on beat one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But in this case, since we are counting in two, there's not only an accent, strong accent on that beat one, there's also a mini accent on a beat four or the beginning of beat two in this case. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, sounding very ro robotic, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And there's and those natural accents are put in there because it gives the music a motion to it. Um, and a lot of waltzes and a lot of dances and things like that, actually waltzes are in three, four, but uh, a lot of dances and things like that are in six, eight. And a lot of times you're going to count those in two because you have that natural um, you, that natural accents on beat one and then beat four, almost like you would with a dance, right? If you're dancing back and forth, right? I can't really show you my feet, but if you have one, two, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, he has a natural like swaying motion to it. That's why a lot of dances can be in six, eight, because it works out pretty well. All right, let's get on to our next compound time signature, which is... Which asks real quick, is there a 3-8 time signature? The answer is yes. And how would you know the difference between that and 6-8? Well, obviously, you know, I don't want to, um, you know, oversimplify it. But obviously, the first main thing is on the music, it'll say 3-8. But you're probably wondering, like, if you're listening to a piece, how can you tell whether it's in 3-8 or 6-8? So uh, the main answer would be it's very hard to be able to tell between 3-8 and 6-8. The only way you would be able to tell is basically based on what I just said, because if you're counting 6-8 in two different ways, or you're in two different beats, right? You have the stronger accent on beat one and the weaker accent on beat four or beat two, depending on you know how you're looking at it. Um, so the difference between that and 3-8 would be 3-8 would have a strong beat every three beats one two three one two three one two three where six eight we go one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six so there's a little accent on four five six but not as big so that's the main difference is with three eight you would have twice as many strong accents good great question okay nine eight time signature if you understand six eight this is so easy uh, the only really difference is that there's nine beats in a measure instead of six. And that also kind of implies something else that when you're breaking it down into groups of three, you now have how many beats? You actually have three beats instead of just two. Remember last time we were breaking it into a one, two, three, four, five, six. But this time, or one, two, one, two, grouping each group of three into a beat. This time we're counting as, uh, you can count as nine individuals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That would give you just one accent on beat one. But if you count it as uh, one, yeah, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It kind of gives you a stronger be uh, accent on beat one again and then weaker ones on two, three, four, just like that. So it's very similar to 90. It's just that there's another beat pretty much. Let's take a look at exactly what this is going to be like. So let me draw this out so you can visualize how you're going to be counting these. And let's take a look. So 
uh, obviously, you're going to see, first of all, you're going to know if you're in 9.8 or something like that or 6.8. Say you don't have the time signature for some reason or you forget what time signature you're in. If you see a lot of eighth notes being beamed in the three without the, th without the triplet, really being written there, you know you're probably in one of these compound time signatures. It's very common for all of them to be grouped in a three like this. Okay, we do not need four beats. We only need a three. So there we go. So there's our nine individual beats. And then obviously you can you know, group them into groups of three, which gives you three groups of three, as you probably remember if you've taken uh, math, basic math. Uh, all right, let's take a look. Uh, right here. So a, uh, somebody brought up in the chat, a polka is also very good for these compound time signatures. Okay, let's take a look here. So we have these three groups of threes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. One, two, three. I guess above them, I should have wrote what beat you're going to be counting rather than their groups in group of three. I mean, you can obviously see that. So one, two, three. One, two. Two, three, one, two, three. So there you go. So once again, uh, it's the exact same as six, eight, except count it with another measure. If you if you break it down in the nine individual ones, you're chain uh, and versus the other way of counting them, grouping them into groups of three. Cat got my tongue for a second there. Uh, the main difference is, in counting is that there's going to be an accent, more accents, the more uh, groups that you count them in. So if you're grouping them into groups of three, you're going to have more accents going on than the individual. All right, there's another main compound time signature. There are more than this, um, but this is the main one we're going to be talking about today, which is... Okay, now we're talking about 12-8 time signature, so obviously like 6-8 and 9-8. Uh, the eighth note gets one beat since 8 is on the bottom, except this time it can be counted as 12 individual beats or in four if you're grouping them into groups of three once again, and the same kind of stuff applies as we were talking about before. So let's get a 12-8 time signature in here. As you can clearly see, we have 12, I almost counted it wrong, 12 individual notes here. And then you can see how they're grouped into groups of three naturally. And by the way, if you don't know how stems work with rhythms, generally speaking, not 100% of the time, but 95% of the time, the stems are actually made to tell you where the beats are in music. So that's why there's two eighth notes, like in 4-4 four, four time, that are connected by a flag a lot of times, because they're showing you that when grouped together, this makes a complete beat. So that's what it's showing you. So even here, it remains true, except generally you're going to find three grouped instead of two, like in a simple time signature. So now you obviously have four beats here, instead of three or two that you had before. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 10, 11, 12, which obviously we get you a strong beat on beat one. But this time now there's gonna be a strong on beat one and then weaker on two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, one, two. I could do it better. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just like that. So it's pretty simple. Like I said, 6-8 is probably the one you're going to struggle with the most if you're not familiar with these at all. Because it's going to be like a whole different universe. Especially with playing the half notes and the quarter notes and things like that. And the different um, combinations of rhythms. Let's talk about that really quick. And talk about how we can break up uh, the beats if they aren't just straight eighth notes. Alright, so say you have a crazy rhythm like this, it doesn't have just straight eighth notes, so it's like, oh no, what do I do? Well, you have to start thinking in terms of eight now, or the eighth note getting one beat. So remember what that implies. That implies, let's go over all the notes we have in front of us. It implies we have a quarter note here. A quarter note now gets two beats instead of just one. You gotta get that in your head. Quarter note does not get one beat for the first time in your life, probably. So the dotted quarter note, before got one and a half beats. So how many beats is it gonna get in 12-8? Well, it's gonna get three, right? Since one and a half and one and a half is three. Uh, so you got three right here. So you have three beats here. So this, if you're breaking down them into groups of three, we already have our group of three right here because an eighth note or dotted quarter is equal to three eighth notes like we saw uh, just a minute ago. See, one, two, three. Those added up to a whole beat. And then this one does too. So there's one whole beat right there. I'm just going to draw a little bracket 
um, there for you. Let me draw the one a little higher. So now we need to figure out where beat two is gonna be. So what we really need to do is figure out what combination of the upcoming beats equals to three. Well, we have a quarter note, right? Is a quarter note worth one? I forget. No, it's not worth one. It is worth two. It was worth one in four, four, but this time it's worth two. So we're, we need one more beat, right? Because we're looking for those groups of threes and hey, they gave it to us here. We have our a group of three uh, right here. So there's our beat two. So, so far you have one, two, like that. So that's how you'll be counting them out. And then you want to be taking a look here. We have our eighth note. How many is an eighth note worth? Is it worth half a beat? I forget. Of course I didn't forget. The eighth note is worth one beat. So we need to group it up with this quarter note beside it for beat three. And then where's beat four? Well, just the remaining notes. So long as there's a correct amount of notes in that measure, it should uh, pan out and equal to that. So even though I'm counting this, what I would be careful of is that you also have to get used to just still, uh, even when you're counting these in the groups of threes, you still need to be counting a little bit in the individual notes because when you're counting this dotted, uh, well, I guess you could count, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're counting this dotted quarter note, you know, uh, and you're counting them breaking up the beats, it would be like one, two, three, four. Now, notice how that was kind of sloppy, right? There wasn't really a formulaic way of me counting this out. So what you want to do is you still want to be counting the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But what I recommend you do is accent the first of each of those beats. So you're really counting the individual beats. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, 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 two three, Four, two, two. just like that. You still want to be counting the one, two, three, one, two, three, because that'll help you play the dotted quarter in all these beats in the correct amount because you're swapping uh, rhythms regularly. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, I counted it as two sets of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's really hard to count up the twelve because as you start getting past ten, eleven. 12, it takes a lot more time to say that than it does um, into, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So even though it's in 12, you actually could, uh, to make it easy, count it in two sets of 6. 1, 2, th right. one, two 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So as you can see, that was nice and solid. Um, and I was still playing them grouped into their groups of individual notes or into groups of threes by putting those natural accents in there. Quiz time. Okay, so quiz. What are the two ways you can count 6-8 time signature? Well, one way, you can pause the video if you need more time to think. One way involves in counting the beats as six individual notes. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty easy. Or you can group them into two groups of threes. You can break any of these compound time signatures up into groups of threes. So instead of counting one, two, three, let me show you on the piano. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know, it's going to go one, two, one, two. And that kind of helps the music move along a little bit as well as put those accents in there like I mentioned. So let's take a look at question number two. Question number two is you count 90 as nine individual beats. What is the second method? Now, two kind of answers here, but I really want a number answer of like how many beats you can count it in. But obviously the other answer is that you can group them in the groups of threes. And how many groups of threes can you fit in the nine? Well, if you know your multiplication, three times three is nine. You can have three groups of three. Okay, let's get on to the last question just to make sure you are um, you know, on the right track. So three. A compound time signature can be counted in how many ways? I probably should have put this uh, question first because the other ones kind of answered that already. But like I said, you should know this. The, the main way it can be counted is in individual beats. And then after that, you can break them up into groups of three to put those natural accents in there. All right, and if you have any questions about what we talked about today in today's lesson, let me know in the comments. I would love to love to hear from you or if you felt the lesson was helpful you know let other people know in the comments as well it really helps us all come together as a community and really uh, helps enrich us all i see so many awesome comments 
uh, that really are either things I haven't thought of or maybe something I kind of forgot when I was teaching the lesson, and it really helps other students uh, to see that, so long as it's good information. But 99% of the time when I see comments, the information is uh, correct. Okay, so somebody in chat asks, uh, what is an example of something in one of these compound time signatures? This one happens to be in 9-8, and this is uh, Heizu, Joy of Man's Desiring. It's a very common piece by Bach. It's actually quasi a Christmas piece. Uh, I do hear it a lot around Christmas. It's very nice. I do recommend it, uh, even for beginners, since it's not you know, super difficult. You obviously want to be... I do not use Bing, by the way. You do not, um, <laughs> oh my goodness, let me start over. Okay, so one of my live stream attendees suggests I take a look at a song in a compound time signature. This one, Hazu Joys of Man's Desiring, is a very common piece, a very popular piece by Bach that I recommend for beginners. And this one is in 9-8. Now, um, obviously, like what we've been talking about, you can see how each beat, there's, you know, th three groupings of eighth notes for each one. There's happens to be three of them in each measure, like we talked about. So I could count this as one, two, three, one, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, running out of breath. So <laughs> seven, eight, nine at the end there. So I can count it as uh, nine individual ones, but I can count break by breaking them into groups of threes as three. So this is how that would work. One, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Just like that. As you can see, when I counted in three, that it kind of helped um, break the uh, not break the music up, but give it a better flow because it gave had a few more accents, minor accents in it. So instead of counting as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. So each time I hit one, two, three. There's that that accent, and like I said, that really helps keep the move uh, notes moving along. Now when you get at full speed, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Two, oops, one, two, three. As you can see, even playing it faster gave it an even better kind of sound. Uh, it really sounded uh, together there. But if you're first learning this piece, don't try it that fast, of course. You really want to go slow. And like I say, when you first learn the piece also, count them out as nine individual beats. One, two, three. One, two, three. You know, that'll actually keep you going slower than playing too fast, which by the way, as you know by watching my lessons, that, that that is the number one thing killing the progress of a beginner piano student. So a great suggestion that I take a look at this piece. I recommend you take a look at this piece as well. It's called Heizu Joys of Man's Desiring. I just looked it up on Google. Um, you know, look, type in the title plus sheet music. Yeah, can't go wrong. If you want to learn more about what we talked about today, then I highly recommend you look up a playlist. I'm going to try it. Well, I'm not going to try it. I'm going to remember to put up a pop-up uh, here, or a card that you can click on to get to this. But if you type in uh, Rhythm Practice and Lessons on the Web, and you scroll down, so actually when you first comes up, you scroll down a little bit into the Rhythm Practice um, playlist. I'm also going to put a link in the description. I highly recommend you check that out if you want to take your understanding of rhythm to the next lesson. So the perfect place to go once you're done this lesson. So thanks everybody for coming out to our classroom. This has been Tim from You Know Where Lessons on the Web. Have a great one and I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Thank you so, so much.